Kelly O'Dwyer, good morning. Welcome good morning. back. Good morning. Thanks, Barry. Are you at all embarrassed by that now, given you describe it as a talk fest, and it turns out it's a whole lot more than that? Well, Barry, clearly we have all been appalled by a number of issues that have been aired at the Royal Commission. There is no question of that. But the government has been very alive to the problems in the financial services industry and we have been acting from the get-go. We have known that people have had problems when they have complained to their financial institutions. And rather than sitting idly by, we have gone about establishing the Australian Financial Complaints Authority. We have known that there have been issues with financial advisers who have given advice to people about their retirement savings with only four days worth of training and being able to hang up their shingle and call themselves an expert. And instead of sitting idly by, we have acted, we've taken action and we have established the Financial Advisor Standards and Ethics Authority. What you didn't do for a we, long time was set up a Royal Commission. Why didn't you do that? Well, well, let me tell you what we've been doing. What we have been doing is we have been lifting the standards for financial advisors. We have been putting caps on the upfront commissions that people could in fact charge when they sold people insurance. Uh, we heard that harrowing story at the Royal Commission about insurance that was sold and huge upfront commissions right, were paid. And you, and you've now, been, the, the you, government has actually acted on that. Uh, yeah. We have increased the money for ASIC $127 million for yeah, we'll, increased we'll, surveillance we'll get back and enforcement. To, to the ASIC thing, We've increased their powers. Yeah. And only on Friday, Barry, we actually announced the culmination of the work that we had been doing, the ASIC Enforcement Review Task Force, where we're increasing both the civil and yeah. criminal penalties for both individuals and corporations who are involved in corporate or financial misconduct, as well yeah. as increasing and, and the and powers of ASIC. And we'll get back to ASIC. that, but ASIC is saying that's not necessarily the, the, the best way to go in any case. Um, but, no, but, ASIC's but, actually but, asked no, for I'll, these I'll an opportunity to talk about that shortly. But first of all, were you wrong to delay the calling of a, of a Royal Commission for as long as you did? Well, well, Barry, I think the record speaks for itself. We have taken action. We have taken action. We established the Royal Commission, Barry. Now, we didn't do this but as a political stunt. you took so stunt. long we didn't to do it set as a it up. Were you stunt. wrong? Were you we, wrong to well, do well, that? Well, Barry, just, I'm happy to answer your question, but you've got to give me a chance. Um, we did it soberly. We did it carefully. We wanted to take action straight away to address those issues that we knew about. We reflected on whether, in fact, it was the right thing to do to establish it, and we decided it was. We've done it. We've established it, not only with very broad terms of reference, rather than the narrow focus that some might have actually had instead, um, but we've also put in place a, a very good right. Royal Commissioner, I who I think is demonstrating what a fantastic job that he is doing, what the Royal Commission is doing yes. in actually getting to the heart of these issues. I think I gave an opportunity to answer the question. You didn't. You didn't. Well, Were well, you I have wrong to delay it for as long as you did? Well, look, Barry, I've answered your question. No, you haven't. I you have haven't said whether question. you were wrong I've said or we've right established to it. delay it. We have, in fact, established it. You have established it, it but well, it, it took a long time coming. Were you wrong? Well, well, let me put it to you this way. We would not have done all those other things that we have otherwise done to address these All right, let me put so, it another way so there, because clearly I'm not getting a direct answer on that. You said <laughs> that the Royal Commission at one stage when Labor suggested it was reckless and ill-conceived. Were you right or wrong about that? Well, Barry, you can obsess and Labor can obsess about these issues. I'm actually obsessed about fixing the problems, right. and that's what you I have been focused on. You said it was very dangerous. Were you right minister. or wrong now, when you said it was very dangerous? Yeah, well, we also have to have, as a government, a very sober view, not only on the issues around corruption and it's misconduct, an, an but also around you financial right? stability. Were you right well, Barry, or wrong? Barry, Barry, I, I'm trying to actually answer your question, and that is the financial services sector accounts for about 10% of our economy. You can't rush into these things as a stunt. Bill Shorten went on radio in Melbourne declaring the need for a Royal Commission and he said, I've jotted down some ideas on a piece of paper. They never produced terms of reference. In fact, when the government established the Royal Commission, at the beginning mm -hmm. they said it was going to be a whitewash. Yep. Then they said the banks had written the terms of reference and now they well, want to claim credit. Well, so Barry, what, what let me else? say to you, we have done the right thing for the Australian people right. the another thing that you, another thing you said at the time this will be of no benefit to consumers you said that surely shining a light on the atrocities that the banks have, have committed in some cases that will benefit the consumers were you right or wrong about that so asic has has 
made a statement that has said uh, that they have been investigating a number of these issues. So a lot of these issues that will are being it, aired... Will the consumers the benefit Royal, from this exercise? But, uh, will they benefit? Uh, there is no question we got it right in establishing the Royal Commission. I, I'm very happy to say that to you, Barry. <laughs> very happy to say will that. Will consumers benefit from this they Royal They will commission? benefit from the action we have taken. They will benefit from the Royal from the Commission, commission from, as well. There's no question. Well, then question. you were wrong about that. Will well, you concede well, no. that? You were wrong to say consumers would not benefit. Uh, uh, I, I'm very happy to concede that we have taken the right action. We have been taking the right action and will continue to take Barnaby the right Joyce action. Barnaby Joyce has conceded you got it wrong. The four banks have all conceded they got it wrong. Why are you so reluctant? Because, Barry, governments need to be sober and deliberate in how they go about the business how of government. How about being up front as it, well? Yeah, yeah. And, how, and we have been up front. I mean, we have been up front. You know, it's very clear. The record demonstrates, you know, that we took action in relation to all these other measures. We've increased the powers of ASIC. We've increased the funding. We've put them on a secure footing. We've brought in a new chair of ASIC. We've brought in a new deputy chair with enforcement focus. We've actually said that we need to have higher standards for financial advisors. Yeah, We're putting yeah. in place a one-stop shop for consumer complaints. We've put in place the banking executive accountability regime, which, uh, you know, a number of people said we shouldn't do. But but we did because we wanted people in right. banks to have accountability. So mm. these things would not have happened, Barry, oh, no. uh, had and, yeah, we and... not taken action from the get-go, had we simply said, we're going to kick it off into the long grass. We've yeah. not done that. We're going to continue to take action. But we were right to establish the Royal Commission with broad terms of reference. That's what we've but done. You won't That's you part, were to delay. That is but part you... of what the Turnbull government okay, has delivered. You said earlier that, uh, that your approach is broader. Labor's was too narrow. And yet at one point you said that Labor's approach would damage the economy. Doesn't it then follow, if you have a broader approach, you'll damage the economy even more? The government, when we put together our terms of reference, were very, very careful in how we constructed the terms of reference. We wanted to make sure that the Royal Commissioner could go into any area that he needed to go into in order to examine our financial system. Our financial system is not just the banks. It includes superannuation. It includes insurance. We've been hearing issues raised in the Royal Commission about those specific areas, areas that the government put in its yeah, terms right. of reference. Isn't part of the problem that you have now is that you haven't exactly had an aversion to royal commissions. Um, it, your approach on the, on the, on the, um, on the banks is stark, in stark contrast to the way that you rushed to royal commissions in areas where you could put your political opponents in the dock. You put Kevin Rudd in the dock, you put Julia Gillard in the dock, you put Bill Shorten in the dock over royal commissions that I think a lot of people would say were nowhere near as urgent or as compelling as this one. Well, the government's established one. I mean, I, I don't know. It took you a you, long you, time. You, 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 you were dragged well, kicking well, and me, screaming we, to the Royal Commission. If you want to go over the political entrails, Barry, let me say this. Well, that's the important first, as well. The first person who called for a Royal Commission was actually Mark Butler in the Labor Party when Labor was in government. The big scandals that happened, happened, Trio, Great Southern, Storm Financial, happened when Bill Shorten was the Financial Services Minister and had direct responsibility. He was almost three years in the job. Labor did virtually nothing. We acted on coming into government. We put in place a financial system inquiry. We have been instituting the vast bulk of all of those recommendations. Labor opposed that. You know, I, I think it is a bit rich for people to claim uh, that we should have acted earlier when in fact they have the opportunity and when we as a government have been very sober in the way that we've gone about it and we are actually getting results for consumers. Yeah. We care about consumers. And on Friday you did, as you said, announce uh, stiffer penalties. What's the point of those stiffer penalties if you don't catch them in the first place? Well, well, that's why you actually have to strengthen the regulator as well. You have to make sure that you not only have the right penalties, so you can't simply have penalties that are seen by some corporations or institutions as the cost of doing business. No more, we've said to that. We have said you need to have stiff penalties where you can disgorge profits if people have done mm. the wrong thing. And we've said that you need to have a strong regulator that can actually enforce that. So you've got to build their capability. We've got a new chair of ASIC, our conduct regulator, uh, that's James Shipton. We've got a new deputy chair that we have announced and that is Dan Crennan QC with a specific focus on enforcement. We have put them on a secure funding footing by having industry funding for ASIC. We have strengthened their powers. Part of what we announced is
well on Friday was strengthening their powers to actually ban individuals who had been involved in misconduct. We have also given them additional ability to actually look at telecommunications, interception materials and strengthen their warrant powers so that they right, can actually investigate, go after, prosecute and stop those people who are doing We're running short of time but I want to ask you about these company tax cuts now and given, given the, uh, what we've heard in the Royal Commission, it's going to make it so much harder now for you to prosecute a case that you want to give big tax cuts to the banks, in fact the lion's share of the tax cuts to the banks. Uh, well, we want to actually give tax cuts to all companies, including the banks. Because we want, well, well, I mean, so, so Barry, what are you suggesting? Well, that somehow that's not we what have I a, suggest. Darren no, no, Hinch, so Darren the, Hinch, who's a critical player in this, you need his vote to get these company tax yeah. cuts through. He says the yeah. banks should be excluded. So, so you know, we're going to have a new taxation system that's based on a morality tax. I mean, let, let's get a well, little bit real here. you've just lost Darren Hinch's vote. I mean, we're, I, well, let me let me just explain why it is that we are prosecuting the case for a company tax cut and I think it's pretty clear we have had 26 years of uninterrupted economic growth but that is not guaranteed that prosperity the high living standards that Australians have benefited from they're not guaranteed we've got to put in place the right economic framework that can actually encourage our economy to grow you do that through investment you do that through the creation of jobs and that will increase wages we are not right, internationally so, so you, competitive. So you give these billions of dollars to the banks how do you think they'll spend the money? You, so, so I'll just finish this point. We have not been internationally competitive. We were in 2001 when we actually cut the company tax rate down to 30 yeah. percent. We were ahead of 19 other OECD countries. Now there are only three ahead of us. We've got the US, right. who's actually cut their company tax rate down from 35 to 21. Sure, but let me let me the go UK, back. Who's cut let me go back to, to the question, though. If you give if you give the banks these billions of dollars. How do you think they'll spend the money? Well, we think they're going to invest in their businesses. When they invest in their businesses, they actually invest... The banks will. Yeah, we think we think that they're going to invest in their businesses. They're going to innovate. They're going to make sure that they can employ They'll pass people. on wage increases they're, to their well, employees. Well, this is what we've heard from some of these you, you big trust companies. Them, you trust them to do this. Well, this is what we've heard from a number of big companies and that they will them? do this. Uh, in fact. Bill Shorten. Do you still trust and the Chris, banks well, to do well, this? Well, look, I think the banks, the banks themselves, have got a lot of um, reparation that they need to do in order to build trust of the Australian people. There is no question about including, that. Including, but you including, including how conflate, they spend how they spend this. this you, are, tax, you are trying this, to conflate the tax two, cuts. two issues that I think should not be conflated. Uh, it is good for our economy to actually, I mean, it's more than just the banks who are actually part of um, the economy here as sure, well. Sure, it includes, you know, banks. It and, includes them. And it includes them, right? Yep. But it includes a whole host of other businesses as well. And let's not forget, some right. of these bigger businesses employ smaller businesses. I mean, are you seriously suggesting that if we've got small businesses who actually benefit from the company tax cut? They've already got the and cuts, that they, yeah. They've and already that, got And them. if they do the wrong thing, we should have no, some sort of morality tax on them. They've already got the cuts. I'm talking here about whether the banks I mean, should get them. I mean, let's, let's be a little bit real. All right. Thanks for coming in this morning. Appreciate My it. My pleasure.